Hey girls, do you know what time it is? It must be gaudy time. Here we go. That was a really shitty niche reference, but whatever. Hey guys, it's Allie, and in today's video, I wanted to talk about the girl veers because it is gaudy season, gaudy hype as I like to call it, where everybody is active on AG social media because it's winter break, people are taking the holidays off of work, and everyone just gathers together to get excited about the girl of the year. And thus, if you make videos talking about the girl of the year, specifically the new one, you will get usually a bunch of views. Anyways, gaudy hype season is here, so we are going to talk about girl of the year dolls. I have made a few videos in the past talking about my favorite girl of the years, least favorite girl of the years, blah blah blah, but today I want to talk specifically about girl of the year tropes. So I made a community post asking for people to list the traits, whether they are physical, like the doll itself, or in their story, that American Girl has overdone the most in the girl of the year line. And I compiled the ones that you guys suggested into this video. So we're going to start off by talking about tropes from stories, and then we're going to move on to physical tropes. Though I did not specifically prompt it. A few of you guys also talked about some features that you would love to see in future Girl of the Years, so I also am going to talk about a few of those in the end just to end on a more positive, open-minded note. So without further ado, let's get started. The first overdone trope in the Girl of the Year line is to have some type of hobby related to an animal. A few examples of this are Nikki Fleming, 2007, training rescue dogs. Leah went to Brazil, had a bunch of animals in her collection. Collection. Sage was a horse girl. Nikki was also a horse girl. Corinne, a big part of her story, is also training dogs. Kira goes to Australia to save koalas. Animal Lover is just very, very much a popular trope in collections. A bunch of young girls, AG's target demographic, love animals. And I think in recent years especially, having animals being part of the doll story is just a way to sell overpriced plushies. I actually went to the American Girl store today and I had no idea that they made like a girl I say girl because that's what American Girl refers to. I hate the gendered marketing. But there was a plushie of Flurry, Corinne's dog. And I was like, oh, this is cute. I'm curious how much it is. It was $48 Canadian. Not sure what that is in USD, but that is way too much. I got a giant Squishmallow at Costco for way cheaper than that. Like I think 18 Canadian or something. So definitely the animal lover tropes are to sell overpriced plushies in my opinion. On a similar note, a lot of the girl of the years I noticed have pets. I first got into American Girl at the very end of Kanani's year, so McKenna was the first girl of the year that I fully experienced, like, getting excited for the movie and the collection-ish, kind of the collection, because I wasn't really on the AG website, you know what I mean. And pretty much every single doll had some type of pet. McKenna had a dog and a hamster, Sage of course was horse girl, Isabel had a cat, Grace had Bon Bon, which I do own. Leah had a bunch of different animals. You get the idea. And I know growing up with a pet is quite common. I live in a very dog friendly city. So it is so common for people I know to have a pet dog or to see just dogs all around the city. But I have never really had a pet. I had a fish for a little bit when I was younger. I just feel like every single doll has a pet. And once again, it's a way for American Girl to sell more plushies and merchandise. I don't know how realistic it is for every family out there to have a pet. Granted, there's a big difference taking care of a fish and taking care of a dog, but I just think a petless girl of the year would be nice. At least switch it up from the typical dogs and cats that we get. I just feel like it's been very much overdone. Next is the one that you guys all probably expected to be in this video once you read the title, and that is dance. And I feel like compared to the other tropes on this list. I have a soft spot for dance. I did it for 10 years. I still do it a little bit. So yes, I will fully admit it's overdone, but I also think dance is just more complex than a lot of the general public think it is. They will see Gabriella and then they'll see Isabel and then they'll see Marisol and then they'll be like, oh, they're all dancers. They all did the same dance. No, they do not. There is a difference between the styles. And of course, as a dancer, I love seeing the dance costumes that they give the dolls. I love seeing all of the workout outfits and things like that. And even though I do own a fair bit of Isabel's collection, I low-key want another dancer girl of the year, but I'm definitely in the minority saying that. But I will agree it has been overdone a lot. I think if 
if American girls still wanted to incorporate dance, doing some type of cultural dance would be really cool. Like for example, a Highland dancer doll. I know Maple Lea made an outfit that was something like that. Or a theater kid doll doing musical theater dance I would be so down for because once again, it's just the story of my life. And I do know that with Girl of the Year 2023, a lot of the marketing is like superstar on stage because we've had quite a few singer dolls, which I realized I actually did not put on this list. Impromptu, singer dolls. We've had like Tenny, we've had Gabriella, we've had Melody, scrap the singers. But a theater kid doll would combine singing and dancing into one doll. So you can kind of please both crowds. Rebecca, I guess, is the theater kid doll, but theater nowadays, I feel like is different enough from 1914 theater that you could have a doll like actively be involved in the school play, maybe even taking on like a director role. Hoping that's what Gaudi 2023 is. We will see how this video ages, but that's what I want in a girl of the year. But back on topic, dance is overdone. Next is beach slash surfer girl girl of the years. This started with Kaylee in 2003. Then in 2006, we got Jess who came with a whole palm tree hammock, super beachy. She goes to Belize. So that's another beach girl just in the first few girl of the years alone. Then we took a little bit of a break from the beaches and we got Kanani in 2011, has a whole surfboard, Hawaii, very beachy. Then we got Joss in 2020, who is also beachy surfer girl. And if we count historical dolls here, Nanea, also beachy Hawaiian with a surfboard. So this trope is quite overdone as well. It's another one that I feel like no one talks about, but it is overdone in my opinion. <laughs> this next category of girl of the year tropes is what I like to call rich girl things. A lot of people complained that the girl of the years often have rich hot hobbies, stories, pets, etc. So we're gonna dive into that a little bit. But of course, American Girl's target audience is, you know, rich upper class girls because the dolls are expensive. Am I a rich upper class girl? Absolutely not. I'm a broke college student. So please do not skip the ads. It gives me money. The first rich girl thing we're gonna talk about is travel. So we had Jess in 2006 traveling. To Belize and then the traveling took a little bit of a break and then we got Grace in 2015 who traveled all the way to Paris and then the year after we got Leah in 2016 who went all the way to Brazil and then in 2021 we got Kira Bailey who traveled to Australia. I just feel like these traveling tropes are becoming more and more common. I have only been to USA and Canada. I'm from Canada and it's not necessarily realistic for every single you know American family to be able to afford these big luxurious vacations overseas every single year. If you're American Girl's target audience, maybe, but I just think the travel has been so overdone. I liked it even though I'm not even American. When the Girl of the Years would, you know, stay in their state and you got to learn a little bit more about it. For example, I remember watching McKenna's movie and Seattle is the closest major US city to where I live. And just seeing a story that takes place somewhat near me was really exciting. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people in Paris do not own American American Girl dolls and don't really care for Grace. So just more local dolls would be great. On a similar note, we have rich girl hobbies. For example, riding a horse, cheerleading. I will even vouch that dance is a rich girl hobby, especially if you do competitive dance or like Isabelle's ballet school. If she ever does point, the amount of point shoes she will go through. Dance shoes are insanely expensive. You have to pay for costume fees, hair, makeup supplies, all this stuff. Like ballet, you definitely could find ways to do it for cheaper. But if you're going to a big fancy ballet academy like Isabel, she either got a scholarship or is very rich. Those are just the hobbies that are coming to the top of my head right now, but there's definitely more examples out there. Also just expensive pets like owning a horse. It's not just as simple as you own the horse. You have to get a whole stable, food, horse care supplies. It's an expensive thing. Corinne skiing is another expensive hobby as well. The next story trope is the mean girl trope slash friendship drama trope. Apparently this has been in almost every single girl of the year. The American Girl Doll Film Channel commented on my community post that the whole friendship drama thing is overdone. As American Girl Doll News pointed out in 2020, there is a problem. Every girl of the year since Nikki had friendship drama and it's always the same. The girl of the year is spending less time with friends. The girl of the year's friends ditched her for something or someone. The girl of the year has to stand up to a bully or make friends with a bully, etc. So this trope is 
very overdone. I think the biggest example of friendship drama is Krissa. It was her main plot point compared to some other stories where it's more of a side thing like in Corinne's story, for example. At least going based off of the AGSM series, she was dealing with a racist boy and friendship drama with her best friend, but then she was also getting lost, training a dog, all that stuff. So friendship drama is quite common. And I will say, if you're growing up, you probably experienced friendship drama. I experienced it, but it does get a bit repetitive after a while, having the same issues come up in every story. So having something different or maybe a long distance friendship where they teach methods on how to keep in touch with a long distance friend would be really fun. The last trope is just overall girly girl of the years. I'm not 100% opposed to girly girl of the years. I am quite a bit girly myself, but if you think about it, most of them have hobbies that are traditionally associated with being feminine or girly. I think Luciana is the first example that comes to mind of a hobby that's not typically girly. She's into STEM. I am not helping out the girls here because I'm not a woman in STEM. I am an arts girly. Hobbies like painting, dance, ice skating are typically considered girly things, and most of the girl of the years just have an overall girly style. So having stuff that is a bit more gender neutral or, you know, hobbies that girls don't typically participate in would be very much appreciated. On to the physical features of the dolls. The most overused mold in the Girl of the Year line is the Josefina mold. So let's count up all of the Josefina mold Girl of the Year dolls. Starting in 2009, we had Chrissa Maxwell. In 2012, we had McKenna Brooks. In 2015, we had Grace Thomas. In 2016, we we had Leah Clark. In 2018, we had Luciana Vega. In 2019, we had Blair Wilson. And in 2021, we had Kira Bailey. The Josefina mold, especially throughout the 2010s, was just so overused in the Girl of the Year line. We've never had an Addie mold Girl of the Year. We've never had a Mary Grace Girl of the Year, though that might be coming in 2023. We've never had a Kaya mold Girl of the Year. So there's definitely room to diversify. And in the last few years, American Girl has been released a lot of new face molds. Corinne was a brand new mold. There's the new McKenna mold. There's even the Nenea mold and the Claudia mold. Hopefully this is the start or yes, end of the Josefina Mold Girl of the Years, but I never want to be too optimistic when it comes to American Girl. Hazel Eyes is another feature that you guys said is quite overused. And of course, so many white Girl of the Years. Can we please have Girl of the Years that are not white? Thank you. A lot of people just complain that the Girl of the Year line dolls are not always super unique. For example, Gabriella was literally a truly me doll. And then Kira just looks like Julie. And there's plenty of other examples of Girl of the Years having truly me look likes. From what I've seen so far, our girl of the year 2023 does look quite unique, but if you want to find leaks about her, this is not the place to find them. Other channels have talked about them. Yeah, Mattel, don't take down my video. Thank you. So I want to end this video by just quickly talking about some tropes that you guys want to see in future girl of the year dolls. In terms of hobbies, a lot of people want to see a girl of the year who was a writer. I do believe Gabriella did poetry, but like a full on writer novel. I have a lot of friends who are in creative writing and are super into this stuff. I've never really been been much of a writer. As much as I think it would be cool, I don't know if AG would do it because it's kind of hard to build a whole collection based off of like, you know, stationery and notebooks, though I do love that and I have a bunch myself, but you guys want a writer. Next would be social media. I guess we did have Z Yang, but in the age of the 2020s, social media is very prevalent and some people in particular want to see someone who struggles with growing their following on social media because Z just got successful but having a doll who like can't go past five subscribers on YouTube and then talking about how they overcame that. I think that's very relevant in this day and age and especially with the big AG online social media community, I think it would be really great to have another AG tuber doll or some type of doll influencer. <laughs> so many people wanted to see more disability represented, whether they were neurological disabilities, physical disabilities, rare conditions, even things like eating disorders, though that might be heavy subject matter for American Girl. And I'm fully on board to see more representation from American Girl. And then as I touched on earlier, just more masculine hobbies, more dolls in other parts of STEM or playing sports like soccer. I'm so surprised we haven't had a soccer girl of the year because soccer was the it sport to play when I was in elementary school. Everyone played it at lunch. Everyone was part of a team. 
game. So I'm so surprised that we have not had a soccer girl of the year or even because they're American, football is big in America. A football doll, Bella and the Bulldogs AG edition. Can we please have that? Anyways, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below any other overused tropes that I forgot to mention in this video in the girl of the year line. Subscribe to my channel for more American Girl doll videos and more girl of the year content as it is gaudy season. And of course, have an amazing day and I will see you all soon with a new video. Bye.